Welcome back to Your Music Mentor. I'm Kevin Yor, and today we're going to dive into the ultimate learning sequence for mastering music composition. Whether you're a beginner or looking to refine your skills, this sequence will guide you through the essential steps to become a proficient composer. So let's get started. Today, what you're going to learn is we're going to talk about ear training, audiation, counterpoint, form and analysis, and orchestration. How can you best infuse these concepts into your practice regimen? so that they're, they are related to each other and so that you can get through these on kind of a day-by-day -day basis without overwhelming yourself. There's so much to learn as a composer. I believe in this idea that you study for about an hour a day, maybe two hours if you're really ambitious, and the rest of the time you're devoted to living, working, practicing, and writing music. So you want to get these core subjects out of the way as soon as possible and you want to study them thoroughly. You don't want to be in a position where 20 years from now you're still trying to learn theory. We want to get through this stuff quickly. And you'll notice I don't actually include theory in this sequence and I'm going to talk to you about why that is. Before we begin, some of the concepts I'm talking about today can be further explored in my text Element a music composition and the music composition technique builder. These are available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, yourmusic.com and other retailers. I've served as a music theory professor and run the composer studio at yourmusic.com. I aim to make music education more accessible and provide deeper insights into the nature of music. So please like, subscribe and find us on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform if you find what I have to say today useful. First up, we have ear training. This is the foundation of all musical skills. Ear training helps you recognize pitches, intervals, chords, and rhythms by ear. It is crucial for developing a strong musical ear, which is essential for both performing and composing music. Now, when I have students that want to take composition lessons with me, I usually recommend that they go ahead and take my flawless course first. It's free over on YouTube. You can also get an audio only version of it or get the videos without ads through my website. Now the reason I recommend ear training is because you wanna first have that basic foundation, doesn't need to be perfect, but a basic foundation so that you can start the next skill, which is audiation. So with alongside ear training, we have audiation. You can take it at the same time. So audiation is the ability to hear and understand music in your mind, even when there's no physical sound present. You just hear the music in your head. It's like thinking in music. It really is. It's a way of thinking in music in great detail. This skill allows you to internalize music, making it easier to compose and improvise. So ear training and audiation go hand in hand, and it's beneficial to practice them simultaneously. So the thing about audiation is I think it's one of the most important things in music. And I'll often have students who apply for composition lessons and I'll tell them, why don't you try taking audiation first? And I do this because composition lessons, I don't want them to be bogged down by basics that I could teach them in a course that's much more efficient and costs a lot less, frankly, than private lessons. So when you develop this power of audiation, you develop this ability to start thinking in music, which you didn't have before. If you're using something like a notation program, like Finale or MuseScore, and you're pressing play and it's playing back at you, that is not a great way to compose because one, Finale and these other programs, they, pay, they play everything perfectly. They play everything in perfect tempo. Even if you apply a setting that kind of randomizes the tempo, you know, in Finale they have like a romantic setting or a Latin setting. Even if you do that, you're not creating inside your mind. You're not creating fluidly. So what you really want to do with audiation is you want to be able to listen to a sound, listen to a melody, listen to a harmony, and let it unfold in your mind's ear. And what's great about audiation is we're very busy. Everybody's busy. You've got multiple obligations and responsibilities. So how do you find time to compose? Well, if you're taking audiation and ear training at the same time, you're spending anywhere from an hour to two hours a day just on skill building, right? So when do you find time to compose? Through audiation, when you're sitting in line, when you're trying to go to sleep, 
when you're drinking your coffee in the morning and trying to wake up. Any downtime that you have, if you have the power of ideation, you don't need a you don't need a notation program. You can compose in your mind. And if you're taking ear training, doing the dictations properly by memorizing them, and doing audiation properly by memorizing everything that you're doing, then you're building your working memory slowly. So you can compose eventually an entire piece in your mind, which is what Wagner was known for doing. He didn't have perfect pitch, but he could compose an entire piece in his mind. And so that is something that is so important to your development. You got to have audiation because it leads into the next subject, believe it or not. Next, we move on to counterpoint. So counterpoint is the art of combining different melodic ideas in a musical composition. It's a technique that dates back to the Renaissance and Baroque periods, but it remains relevant today. Learning counterpoint will enhance your understanding of harmony and voice leading. It makes your compositions more intricate and interesting. One of the reasons I don't recommend theory in this sequence is because counterpoint introduces you to theory in a very natural way. It teaches you about voice leading. It teaches you how chords should move from in progressions and even in sequences. The other thing that I often hear about counterpoint is like, well, why study counterpoint? You don't want to write like Bach, do you? I think this is a very narrow-minded view of counterpoint because when you take your audiation skills and apply them to counterpoint, which is what we do in my course, when you move from audiation into counterpoint, you are enhancing your audiation skills. You're taking your ability to hear independent melodic lines, and now you're composing counterpoints with them, which just further increases the power of your audiation. When you study audiation, you have this ability to hear music in your mind. When you study counterpoint after studying audiation, now you're getting powerful because you start with two parts, go to three parts, and then four parts, and you're able to hear all four parts in your mind by the end of it. So in audiation, we do introduce counterpoint, but I don't talk about the rules. I give you these guided counterpoint exercises where you learn to audiate counterpoint without understanding how to create it. Then in the counterpoint course, we take audiation to the next level and you audiate everything you do. So you can start to see how ear train and audiation kind of work together and then audiation morphs into a more enhanced skill, which is counterpoint. And then counterpoint turns into form, which we're gonna count, we're gonna talk about next. So from counterpoint to form, you're taking your theory and you're expanding your theory knowledge even more through form and analysis. So this is why I don't include theory, because I think you can learn all the theory you need in counterpoint and form and analysis. So our next subject after counterpoint, we delve into form. So musical form is a structure of a composition. It's the blueprint that guides the development of a piece. Understanding form helps you organize your musical ideas coherently. Even if you don't use an established form, learning what other composers used and why it worked will help you create new forms that also work. So whether it's a simple binary form or a complex sonata allegro, mastering form is essential for creating these well-structured compositions. Form is a container of music. If you take your musical ideas and just kind of dump them on the floor. They're all over the place. They're disorganized. People are like, there's some pretty ideas in there, but I don't know what to do with that. I don't know how to understand it. You now pour related ideas into different containers. People can say, oh, okay, those are the red beads, the blue beads, the purple beads. It's organized. They can see how the composition is developing. So form is really important that way. And it's the reason I haven't mentioned theory. When you take form in my course and other courses out there that do this, although I honestly don't know of another course that integrates everything from ear train to audiation to counterpoint to form. I mean, if I did, I wouldn't be doing this. But in my teaching, I was like, you know, this doesn't exist in the world. It needs to exist. We need to have a unified theory of composition where you can practice one to two hours a day and get all your training done and compose at the same time. Okay, so what theory does when taught properly is you learn theory concepts in the form course. So you don't actually need to take theory on its own. So in my course, I teach a crash course in harmony, and then I reinforce those concepts through practical exercises. So 
in my form course, and this is why I recommend you do it if you want to do it on your own, is learn to compose a period. Learn to compose a sentence. Learn to compose deviations to a phrase. So things that go outside of the norm. Learn to compose stand on the dominant, evaded cadences. Learn to compose all these things that previous composers have included in their works because it'll just increase your working memory even further and you'll become a much more powerful composer. So if you do this, then form serves and replaces music theory because as composers, we care about practicality. We want something that really works. So form is the next thing I recommend. Orchestration is sort of the final thing that I think you should work on. And the reason for that is because orchestration is subtle. It's one of the finest arts because you have to be able to hear the way different instruments combine to create different timbres in an orchestra. It's the art of arranging music for an orchestra or other ensembles, including your own original ensembles. It involves understanding the unique timbres and capabilities of different instruments and how to combine them most effectively. Good orchestration can bring your compositions to life, adding depth and color to your music. So this is really important. And I don't currently offer a course in orchestration. I may, but when we get into the form course, we talk a little bit about orchestration, especially when we start analyzing things like Mahler symphonies, we get into orchestration. And there are some really outstanding books out there. The book by Samuel Adler, The Orchestration Text, I think is one of the best ones out there. There's also a book by Blatter, and he was the first person to really help me understand how to write for strings. It's an older book. Um, so there's some good books already out there. With everything else, with ear training, audiation, counterpoint, and form, and music theory, I feel like the materials are lacking. And so that's why I had this desire to create this integrative course that just builds. So how long would it take you to complete these courses if you did them just through my studio as an example? The ear training doesn't matter because you can do ear training throughout the entire sequence. So audiation takes about six months to a year. So let's just say a year. Form and analysis, the way it was originally created and is being created right now, because I'm still working with students and we're developing it, we're about halfway through. But the form course takes about 18 months or actually more like a third of the way through. The counterpoint course, is, which is also active right now, takes about six months to a year. So in all, I would say that I'm basically offering a complete university education in about three years. And then there's other courses I'm gonna be offering as well that can just help dive into these subjects, uh, subjects a little more in depth, like Chinkarian analysis. So really the core subjects, ear trained audiation, counterpoint and form, I feel you can complete in two to three years. And then from there, all that time gets freed up. It's like you have a debt that you have to take care of. You have a $10,000 debt, but you only make about 500 a month in extra money that you can spend that's discretionary. So it's gonna take you a while to pay down that debt. But once that debt's paid off, you no longer pay an interest, and all of a sudden you can apply that $500 to new skills. It frees up a lot of time. So I firmly believe in this idea that you get through your training, two to three years, whatever it takes, and then you can really compose effectively. And that two to three years sounds like a long time, but think of it this way. How much time do you waste starting up your computer every day, dealing with notation issues, dealing with your computer crashing, dealing with just learning how to use a notation program, or playing things back over and over again in Finale or Music or whatever you're using? There's so much time wasted. It definitely equates to the two to three years, in my opinion. The two to three years will last you the rest of your life. It is an investment that is worth everything. It's, in my opinion, more valuable than a college education because in a college education, you'll take form from one professor. You'll take counterpoint from another. You'll take ear, print, ear training maybe from five different people. You know, you don't get the coordination you don't get this comprehensive program that was designed by someone that really understood how everything worked together. I mean, 
This is kind of funny because I was not planning on pushing my programs, but talking about this just got me kind of, it reignited my passion for why I did this in the first place. Because there's nothing like this out there, and I'm just so excited about combining everything in a cohesive way so that you can learn all these skills and go on about your life. Even if you're in college, you can be taking these courses and getting more out of your musicianship. And you can do it in about an hour a day. And it doesn't have to be every day either. If you spend 45 minutes a day, it just takes you a little bit longer. No big deal though, because at the end, we all get to the same place. So to recap, the ultimate learning sequence for mastering music composition includes ear training, audiation, counterpoint form, and then orchestration, which I believe you can learn from a book with good resources for listening. Also by listening to music and analyzing music. And once you have ear trained, audiation, counterpoint form under your belt, orchestration becomes a lot easier. So by following the sequence, you build a solid foundation and develop the skills you need to create compelling and sophisticated music. So thanks for tuning in to Your Music Mentor. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you're on YouTube, hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode as well. Happy composing. And I just want to end with one more thought on this. So I really didn't mean to promote my courses in this. And I wanted to give you the tools that are required for you to kind of do this on your own. And you can do it on your own. But I encourage you to follow this sequence because there's a certain effectiveness in this sequence. Ear training helps you with audiation. Audiation makes counterpoint useful and it's like a living art at that point. As opposed to just this boring sort of thing where you're working with numbers and intervals. Counterpoint helps you understand form. Helps you understand how composers put it together, put music together. Form helps you learn how to compose in the most effective paradigms that exist. And then you can move on to something like orchestration or Shinkarian analysis to round it out. So I hope that you find a system that works for you. I'm here for you if you need it. You can find out more about the programs at yourmusic.com. You'll notice typically I only list ear training and audiation on the website, but all the courses are there. I just ask that you take one of the other courses first because it helps you develop the skills you need for the more advanced ones. So I don't just want people enrolling into my counterpoint or my form course. I want to make sure they have some basic skills. And you can also talk with me. Just send me an email and I'll even have a Zoom call with you if necessary to talk about your goals and what you want to accomplish. Until next time, thank you for listening.